for the house field model, you have mu is one plus k c, first power, and k is of this function. Now this is what makes this theory quite interesting. Because this k being an integral operator always has some smoothing effect, but not so much. It has a limited smoothing effect. Because as you can see, there's a minus one power here, for example. So, um, nevertheless, it's a compact operator and gain some regularity. Okay, so this is a very quantitative study that Hilbert did. So what Kahneman did, Kahneman did that uh, if you look at uh, if any function in C, you uh, project to G0, which is on the kernel, this tangent uh, space kernel of L, and then this uh, micro part G1. Then L is um, uh, negative definite on G1. Oh, by the way, uh, the inner product, every time you talk about the uh, uh, negative definite, you have to talk about geometry. Geometry here means the inner product. Inner product is simply the user L2 inner product. And that is because uh, uh, here is smart to make M plus uh, square root of M, G, uh, G uh, K. Now, uh, I want to look at uh, what happened to the bottom equation when it is actually on this tangent space. Okay. Uh, by the way, I should uh, say that at the uh, 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 very beginning, when you want to be very quantitative, the first thing you do is linearize. Okay, the linear equation can say things more precisely. So now we want to not only linearize, we want to study the action not on the whole space, but only on this tangent space. Okay. And if you do that, you find out that the bottom equation becomes linearized order equation. And for the order equation, and in this form really is the bottom equation, you linearize to this tangent space. On the, okay. Then it has a characteristic. And that characteristic is of this form. Characteristic direction. By the way, whatever characteristic, it is on this tangent space. And this tangent space, let me remind you, is a span of 1 kc, kc squared, times square root m. So this uh, is uh, the characteristic, all the characteristic direction on this tangent space. So on the level of all the equation, what do you have? What, what do we have on this room? If uh, you have an order equation and you make a perturbation, this is space dimension. I'm writing on that page only one space dimension. You can do that in several space dimension. So if I talk, then there'll be a, a, a action along lambda one, which go with the fluid flow. Then acoustic wave and acoustic wave. When I talk, the some speed go in two directions, forward and backward. So this you can find out by looking at the, uh, uh, this uh, 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 icon value, icon function uh, uh, formulation, and you come up with this thing. Okay. And this E1, E2, E3 are orthogonal to each other. And this has some deep uh, uh, reason. And the other equation, which is uh, symmetrizable, and this has uh, quite a long tradition. The first uh, person who realized that was uh, the Russian mathematician Godunov. And he proved a rather general theorem, uh, which says that in any continuum equation, like a nervous st stock, Euler, magneto hydrodynamic elasticity equation, is symmetrizable if there exists something called entropy. Okay. Of course, the order equation coming from bottom equation has entropy. So 
because of that is symmetrizable and therefore these three are orthogonal. Uh, along the all the characteristics you can compute through the Chapman Ansible expansion which I talked very briefly before that there's a dissipation parameter, the heat conductivity and viscosity. And which in this content look at this look at uh, take this form. What is the viscosity? Viscosity has something to do with the Cauchy EI. What is Cauchy? Cauchy EI, if you remember bottom equation, this is the convection. Okay. So the uh, viscosity is, is induced by the combination of L, which is collision, and the Cauchy EI, the convection. Viscosity appear near the thermal equilibrium as the combination of the effect of collision and convection, the right hand side and left hand side of the bottom equation. At this thing, when you work out, it's just an equation, but take a, a, a while to think about it, uh, 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 the meaning of it. It's not easy. Not that I really understand it completely, far from that. But uh, one need to continuously thinking along that line. So uh, I want to look at the Green's function, which is really the, the basic thesis here. Uh, everybody knows Green function. By the way, uh, Green, of course, is a great mathematician in spite of the fact that he did not go to college until was not rather old, but he did all the important things before he go to college. <laughs> <laughs> the college did him not so good. Yeah, um, he died soon after. It got terrible. But a uh, 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 green uh, uh, has some many great thing. The stock theorem is due to green. Uh, green. Okay, he stock uh, presented green's result in his class now become stock theorem. But Green's main contribution really is not a Green's theorem or stock theorem. It is a Green's function. Okay. Uh, all right. So here's the, the Green function. Uh, it has. Uh, oh, oh what, what is the Green function so important? Because uh, it is uh, Green realized that if you know, if you can construct Green function, you can construct the general solution by linear superposition. Okay. So this is a, 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 a equation of linear collision, uh, a, a linear bottom equation, linear around the Maxwellian. Okay, so you linear around this tangent manifold, uh, this is a five dimension around certain M here. Okay. Now, when you linear around this, uh, you're, you're thinking about the, the basic state is M, and you make a small perturbation, okay. Now this perturbation here is of delta function, which means that this whole room is all Maxwellian, and I put a, a, at x equals zero, a bunch of particle with the velocity cos zero, and so it goes this way, with this velocity cos zero. Then it can become to disperse out, because it's going to collide with the neighboring particle, and what happened? So that's the, uh, 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 the green function will tell us. And this, uh, strictly speaking, has been studied by functional analysis. They will say that uh, we are bottom equation because of uh, H theorem. And in fact, uh, it is uh, very quantitatively understood by Kahneman and Hilbert that uh, the green function would decay in L2. Okay. But uh, here, uh, we took the point of view that uh, we want to find the green function exactly what it is. Okay. And this is what it is. Okay. Uh, it, has, it has a two part, two main part. The first part is called particle-like. It is also a delta function. But this delta function is going to move. Of course it's going to move, right? Because uh, 
uh, it's going in space, right? Micros velo cost of velocity, so make it move. But it's decay exponentially, e to the minus nu k c zero t. This nu is a positive function. Is that one plus k c zero? So this means that this bunch of particle you put in this ocean of Maxwellian, when it's a move, you collide and it becomes to go to other direction. But some of them stay there. Some of them stay there, not a lot, because they exponentially decay. Gradually, though, uh, some other things surface up, and which is the heat kernel type. It travel with all the characteristic direction, and with all the characteristic speed lambda. I'm sorry, this is so. This is lambda, lambda t. Ah, yeah, yeah. This is almost like a modern painting. Uh, uh, lambda kt, okay, with the oil characteristic. But yes, this AI, which is the never stock type of dissipation. Okay. Uh, uh, this one space dimension, in three space dimension, when you put this bunch of particles here and let it go out, then you create the sound wave of Hurricane type. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, somewhat hard earned sense uh, because uh, when you want to study partial differential equation of a constant coefficient uh, econocracy, okay, uh, then one use the Fourier transform, and uh, which means that you try to have spectral study. Uh, however, because of the existence of this microscopic velocity C, is it's infinite dimensional thing. And therefore, the spectrum information is not complete. And this uh, uh, study therefore consists of more than the spectrum study. I should say that the spectrum study uh, is of course the most fundamental. And this go all the way back to uh, Harold Grad uh, and um, Alice Pinsky, Nikolenko, and eventually the Kyoto School of Ukai Nishida, they wrap it up. Okay. But they always study the L2 decay because Fourier transform is isometry in L2. But here, we want to invert the Fourier transform to get this point of estimate that I mentioned to you. Uh, and so this is take a little effort. The particle like wave, you use Picard iteration. And this, this is uh, the linear bottom equation. So uh, this is multiplicative, but it's good, it's a damping. And this is uh, integral operator, it's complicated, but it has smooth effect. So uh, that's how one try to extract the singular part in the bottom equation. And there's something called a mixture lemma. We say that if you do this kind of operation, you gain regularity in KC. And the lemma says that the regularity in KC will allow you to gain regularity in space and time. Okay. And then you finish off with the sobriety uh, uh, calculus. Once you have a smoothness, then you do energy estimate, and you can get the Low order regularity by knowing higher order uh, 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 subordinate boundaries. Okay. So this all these are uh, uh, very nice thing that the Sichuan did. All right. So this page is just to say that uh, why bother with a quantitative study of bottom equation. Why uh, 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 this compactness of the French school or the L2 decay, uh, which go back uh, before the French school, uh, need to be uh, uh, somewhat strengthened. Uh, and that is uh, because there are, uh, well, first of all, this question doesn't need to be answered. Because uh, physically, they always think that if you don't have a quantitative study, what do you have? Uh, usually you need some quantitative study. Uh, you want to know where it's small, where it's large, right? Uh, but specifically, uh, there is, um, uh, uh, in the bottom equation, 
which is different from main vegetable equation or other equation uh, through the layers, the shark layer or boundary layer and initial layer. And that difference has a very important effect on physical phenomena. And those layers, the study of those layers, require pre more precise quantitative understanding, a consistent control of the solution. Okay. And also this is a vacuum, which also set apart the bottom equation from the nervous and bottom equation. And the study of vacuum, which uh, also require more quantitative understanding understanding. And uh, about vacuum, this is uh, uh, a subject uh, highly non-trivial. Um, uh, so far, uh, okay, so Sun Yu Ha has uh, uh, done very interesting work and uh, uh, I, I see also the evaporation toward vacuum uh, and that is, uh, uh, you can read it in chapter 6 of uh, Sonia's second book. So vacuum is a subject that is uh, waiting for more understanding. And all this requires more quantitative uh, understanding of the process. Okay, so I want to say a little bit um, so I still have half hour or, or I'm, my time's up? No, uh, yeah, half hour. Half hour. Okay. Now, uh, some time ago, I, I heard that, that Friedrich, who is also a great applied mathematician in Quran Institute, he said there are three stages in the talk. The first stage is everybody understand. The second stage is that the, author, the speaker, hopefully, he understand. And the third stage is that even the speaker does not understand. Okay. <laughs> And uh, so people a lot say that uh, uh, people joke about this and say which graduate student is he on the first stage or the second stage or the third stage. And this is a bad joke. But uh, I, I, let me try to soon get to the third stage, okay? Because I prepare something I go quickly over. And there was a, an article called uh, How to Go Through the Roof Museum in eight and a half minutes. You cannot do better than eight and a half minutes. And you have to do from the right entry and go to the right room so that you can go to the whole Louvre Museum in eight and a half minutes. Okay. Uh, which, of course, is uh, not a smart thing to do. Uh, okay, so let me go quickly a little bit, okay? Just only half an hour to suffer through, okay? So I want to uh, uh, find the application of the green function, which is. Uh, uh, a, a quantitative understanding because I did not tell you that green function will map L2 into L2 decay at that rate. But instead I said green function looks like that. Right? Uh, uh, a Hogan wave, entropy wave, and so on. So what is the usefulness of uh, such a thing? And uh, um, here's one application. Invariance manifold. Okay. Uh, of the, for the uh, steady bottom equation here. Okay, I want to start with this thing. Okay. And this is uh, um, uh, used for what start the boundary layer and the shark layer. Uh, first, I do it for linear label. So this is the bottom. Uh, it's uh, just an ordinary differential equation. There's only one derivative. First order ordinary differential equation. Uh, as we mentioned, because the, the g is not a function of x, g is a function of x and the c. So therefore, it's an infinite dimensional uh, ordinary differential equation. And uh, we want to study the stable manifold and unstable manifold. Stable means that it go to something as x go to infinity. Unstable means it go to something as uh, x go to minus infinity. Whatever this something, will be a stationary solution, a critical, will be a constant solution of the ODE, right? When the ODE solution goes to something, this something will be the constant solution of the ODE. And as we know, for the bottom equation, the only constant solution is the Maxwellian, right? But just what the Q zero. So therefore, 
uh, uh, this will go to one mass failure and this will go to another mass failure. So this question then is how to find the, all the profile which go to some mass failure. So the first case is that the order characteristic is not zero. Uh, I am now thinking of here's a five dimension. I'm looking at one space dimension, so th there's only three dimension uh, uh, manifold which make Q to be zero. <coughs> okay. So uh, if I uh, consider linear equation, which means that I'll be considering a Maxwellian and only the action around this Maxwellian. Not on the equilibrium manifold, but away from equilibrium, but still nearby. Okay. Uh, and I want to study the, what kind of pro profile will go to this Maxwellian. And there are two cases. The first case is that all the characteristic at m infinity is not zero. Why all the characteristic? Um, there are two actions which impressionistically is like this. One is just go straight to certain mass Okay. And this, I will call this a, a kinetic type or collusion type. A collusion type uh, a, a, a wave. But there are also waves which go around. this uh, manifold. And this I call this a fluid light. And this two type of wave can couple to form a single wave. And this wave being around the equilibrium manifold will propagate with all the speed take a direction, order direction, and uh, has some dissipation of that magnitude dictated by never stop. You know, something like this. So this parameter will come about. Now because uh, we are looking at the stationary wave here, so therefore in order for these two type of wave to combine, this lambda i will have to be around zero, right? Because uh, all the wave has a state, a state, so the speed is zero. Now, if lambda i is away from zero, then this combination would not be possible. And that is the easier case, so I call it case one. And the solution will just go right like this, that the, the picture on the left. A second case will make the combination. So when lambda i is close to zero, then you have uh, something and then go around this. And that's the picture. This is on the state space and this on physical space. You look like that. And then you have a, a collusion type boundary layer plus a fluid like layer. I mentioned before that uh, the fluid like layer is a, a consequence of nonlinearity. In this case, nonlinearity is uh, the strength of the wave, which I call the epsilon. So the collusion la uh, 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 type layer has a, uh, a width k and the, the fluid like there will have a 
also K, but divided by epsilon. Epsilon is a degree of nonlinearity. Why you have a wave? Because the nonlinearity keep them together. If the nonlinearity is weak, epsilon is small, then this wave becomes will spread out. Okay. So this has been all found out by by the uh, uh, Kyoto School uh, 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 through the asymptotic analysis or the computation for BGK model and so on. And uh, uh, Sushen and I try to analysis of this for uh, uh, the weak wave. So now we want to uh, find uh, 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 the find the um, uh, 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 this wave analytically. So the first thing is uh, uh, to s consider the case when the order wave and the fluid like wave and the collision type wave do not couple. But before that, I did a Uh, talk about the, the order wave. So here is uh, the order projection. Uh, B1 is the projection of a function on Kc to the order direction E1, and B2 is to E2. So if I have a general solution a function, when I project B1, I will think of here's the function will produce a wave the order wave with speed lambda 1. Or I'll be thinking of that. But the bottom equation is very important uh, 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 that to, to, to realize, uh, to always keep in mind that what is the bottom equation? Bottom equation Ft in one space by you know, C1 Fx equal to, say, Qff. Bottom equation is the combination of collision and the convection. Okay. So this part is the convection. And what is the effect of this convection do to the wave? And, and this is uh, uh, one part that we call the Euler flux projection. Okay. Which is project a, a, a function times C1 on the Euler direction. And then we want to know if I want to study the wave here in the uh, stable one. So if I want to study the wave in stable one, I want to know whether this or the wave goes in or go out of this region. So therefore, I will have a B plus with upwind projection of order, and B minus with downwind projection. Well, if you start at the bottom equation one full dynamic, uh, uh, then you automatically think about left and right of the fluid wave. So those are the notions. So here's the theorem. The theorem says that um, maybe I, I, I could end with the linear theory and try to make you understood, uh, uh, understand what I'm talking about here. So, so uh, for that, let me talk about the ordinary differential equation first. Okay. Now, ordinary differential equation, what do you try to do about the center manifold theory? So in ODE, let's start with linear ODE, which is a, a, a is n by n metric. And assume that A has a real eigenvalue, so A R R I equals the lambda I R I. So this eigenvector, this eigenvalue. So how you solve this linear ordinary differential equation, which is very, very easy, you just simply Right. 
initial data say y0 write this as summation c i r i i from 1 say n then plus this into this ODE then you get the ci which is a function of t ci0 ci from equal to lambda i cit ok I mean this is what linear algebra for right you decouple the equation and therefore ci t equal to e to the lambda i t c i 0 and therefore the solution y at later time will be summation c i 0 e to the lambda i t r i i from 1 to n so that's the solution of ODE my question then is uh, the following how about the center uh, environment manifold so the stable one the st stable manifold will be the span of all the ri with lambda i negative because this is a, 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 this uh, if you have initial data in this span then e to the minus lambda it will go to zero okay so this is stable manifold an unstable manifold will be the span of all the ri with lambda i less than equal to 0 of course if you have a number uh, greater than 0 so if I have a if I have any given any n vector say h then I write this as a combination h stable plus h unstable of course I did not write down the case when the number i is actually zero that is called a center manifold okay so and then plus h center so h s belongs to the stable h u belongs to unstable and h c belongs to the center center is uh, I did not write down here center manifold will be the span of all the ri lambda i equals zero I am assuming all the lambda i are real numbers just for simplicity okay okay so uh, you can decompose this thing and the uh, if you have initial data uh, given by H stable then you go to zero if initial data given by the unstable then you go to zero if initial data given by center manifold then it will be in constant okay it, it doesn't change in time so this is uh, the center manifold theory says that uh, this fact can be generalized to nonlinear problem in the linear neighborhood okay. but we are in a linear case here okay so it, this is also the same thing here in this case is any n vector here is any function you can see of course the function you can see is uh, it's an infinite dimension okay here is a finite dimensional but nevertheless you can have this decomposition into the stable part unstable part and center part 
and stable part of, if you take initial data with stable part, it will go to zero. Go to zero means go to this Maxwellian we perturb from, right? But all these are linear problem. Zero means go to the Maxwellian, okay? And here's the formula. Here's the formula. This stable flow is given by the following. Let me let me read through this uh, this formula a little bit. Okay. Um, the stable manifold is constructed by this formula. G is the green function. B plus tilde is uh, the Euler flat projection, but only corresponding to wave with with passive speed. But I get rid of it. It's identity minus this one, which means that whatever function I have, I get rid of the wave, which propagate toward the region I want. I'm looking at a stable part, so I'm looking at this part. And uh, I don't like the order wave, which is positive speed. So by taken away uh, uh, this oil of flux, which means that uh, this uh, H times C1 itself has no, or does not produce all the wave which go into it. And therefore, I'll be left with only a wave which go to zero, and no uh, moving part. Um, now this is, uh, 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 this formula uh, will give me the stable, and this will give me unstable, and the P0 tilde, which is the uh, oil of flux projection, give me the center manifold. H how do one obtain such a formula? So let me explain this a little bit. Um, and this is done by time asymptotic analysis. So here is the space, here's time. I'm only interested in this region. Actually, I'm not interested in time. I want to study the steady flow. But I want to use the time asymptotic analysis. So therefore, I am given an initial data H here. And then initial data, uh, uh, some initial data here. And then solve this Boltzmann equation and let it go forever. And hopefully that eventually you go into a wave which is stable as time go to infinity. Now if I know the green function for the whole space and I know the boundary data in its entirety and the initial data in the entirety, then I will come up with the equation like expression like this. Just simply multiplying the bottom equation by the green function to integration by part. Then I got the integral, integral, uh, 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 in, uh, boundary integral. But I also got the interior integral. This interior integral, I want it to go to zero. So I will eventually get only the boundary integral. Now, in order for the interior integral to go to zero, I need to know the green function rather precisely, which I, uh, uh, we know. But I also need to have the boundary data well prepared so that there will be no other wave sent toward it, which is also prepared. Okay. So in any case, uh, uh, the time is important analysis with the help of the point I understand the green function and by taking away this oil flux one can show that as time becomes very large, things become to settle down into a steady order at the bottom flow. 
Okay, so I'll stop like that. Of course, the interesting thing is to look at fully nonlinear theory. What do you mean by fully nonlinear theory? Fully nonlinear theory means that uh, uh, I have a flow going like this. If it has a constant type and then a fluid like with the combination of them, this combination uh, is a nonlinear one. Uh, that's, uh, uh, this fluid flow comes to team up with this uh, constant type wave because one of the lambda i is nearby zero. And one of the lambda i is near zero. You, you know this in OD theory, uh, uh, the nonlinearity will come in in this entirety. And uh, so there are several steps. Uh, uh, I will stop after this page. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the time asymptotic analysis, the approach, this is the spirit of it, is uh, done by now. But the hard work just started from here uh, about this resonance case. All right. So the step one is that in the case when one of lambda is close to zero, the center manifold will increase the dimension. And one would like to classify this as a part of the center manifold. This is three dimension as a, in the one space dimen dimension, okay, this three dimension, and this one dimension. So the center manifold has dimension three plus one, okay. So that's the first step to do that uh, 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 at uh, the case when one of the lambda i is zero. And then to study the, uh, the flow, the, the stable flow, uh, the flow that uh, just simply come down here to study such a flow as one jump from number i positive to number i negative. And this is uh, also the part that uh, the Kyoto school uh, 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 focus their difficulty there. Okay, and this is, uh, I, I still don't know to the full extent how they do it, but by not only vaguely how they do it, and that is the harder part. And because of that, uh, there's uh, too many fold here, too many fold here, and uh, we, we just want to, <laughs> express our admiration at Kyoto School. So Sushen has a nice thing to say this, we call this sonic man, sonic manifold. All right, and then the, the, the combination would be this uh, purely kinetic, kinetic uh, constant type wave with a fluid-like wave. But a fluid-like wave is a, a, a nonlinear phenomenon. So we have a derived Berger type wave, a Berger type equation to monitor, to match this nonlinear wave. And uh, so this is uh, then done in step two. The step three uh, is uh, to compare this with the Kyoto uh, 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 analysis. We have a Sony, Takata, Aoki, uh, uh, they have found out a very interesting bifurcation phenomena. Uh, the bifurcation phenomena, uh, but we could do it only for the weak wave. They have started for the global strong wave, and there's a necessity to do that, uh, 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 to do strong wave. Uh, we could do analysis can carry us only that far. Uh, how? to combine the computation and analysis to study uh, uh, the analytically the, um, this global bifurcation is a challenge. Okay, so I will stop here. Uh, let me just uh, 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 maybe summarize. Uh, this uh, um, 
Boston equation has many things I found out uh, from the Kyoto School. Uh, you, you have many topics you would like to know. And uh, uh, in many of it, this quantitative understanding, uh, which is very natural for the physicists. Uh, they always do quantitative things. I mean, what else you do, OK? But uh, we are getting very smart. I think Marshall Rich was the first one. Uh, and Hans Levy like that. You know, there's an energy estimate for the wave equation and other things. And the uh, uh, energy estimates assume that if you have a solution. If you have a solution, you do integration by power, you get an energy estimate. But there's a smart guy like Hans Levy, he says that actually, if you assume the solution small, uh, uh, exists, then there's an energy estimate, which means there's a priori estimate. But uh, if you have a priori estimate, then you get existence as a consequence. I mean, this is something it sounds philosophically very, very crazy. But uh, uh, now we know there are the Ray Shelter and so on, which allow us to, to say that assuming the solution exists, then it's an energy <coughs> estimate, then therefore the solution exists. Okay, and this is what's done by people like Hans Levy, Marshall Rees, and so on. And the great success of this uh, is just simply says that there's no need to construct green functions and so on. Because uh, all these things uh, can work only for constant coefficient or very particular case and so on. Uh, of course, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe you would know this Chinese phrase. Uh, uh, Do you, do you know about this? Uh, this is a, a measure of one, one foot. Okay, this is the measure. This is, this is a measure, very short one. Okay. And the, uh, of course, this is long, this is short, right? But this is say that this one also has its own short. Short means a shortcoming or weakness. Okay. And this is short, but it has its strength. But what does it play with the word, okay? And how could you say this is long, this is short, this, this is a long thing to say. But, but the reason is that suppose you want to measure this thing, then you better use this guy, right? Uh, because it's a micro scale, it's a macro scale. Uh, and so, so the, uh, all this uh, uh, um, uh, different technique has its different uh, weakness and different uh, strengths. Uh, 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 and, and this is the green function necessarily has to be weakly nonlinear, but it's more quantitative. And so uh, uh, it, it is something useful in, in, in some cases. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you very much.